Hey guys, Dion Taylor here. So for today's video, I want to talk about interactive experience dashboards. And these guys have been around for a little while. You might remember the interactive service hub and customer service. That's kind of when we started with them. But there's a lot of things you can do with these. So they're kind of a hidden gem. So without any further ado, let's just dive into it. Yeah, these dashboards have similarities, obviously, with the regular Dynamics 365 dashboards. So think about the ability to assign security roles to them so that only users with that particular role will have, will have access to them. But there are also a lot of other differences. So let's talk about how they are different from any of those regular Dynamics 365 dashboards. So there's actually two of those types of dashboards already in the system by default. There's a tier one dashboard. And this is, as you can see, a multi-stream dashboard. And then there's also a tier two dashboard and that is a single stream dashboard. So obviously as their names already indicate if you have a multi-stream dashboard you can add multiple streams to a dashboard and what is a stream are you going to say well that's what you're looking at right over here so you can see here active cases my resolved cases my draft emails and my activities so a stream is nothing more than a list of records so think of it as a view we can also put queues in a stream as well if that's something that we wanted to do and the other thing that we can do here when we're looking at this multi-stream dashboard is adding these visual filters so this is pretty unique to the multi-stream dashboards and so is the ability to switch back and forth between a stream and a towel view so if i click on this you see now that my four streams that i had that they now turned into tiles now, when I click on those tiles, you can see that I then see a view with the records that are underlying in that tile. Now, let's take a look at the tier two dashboard. This is, like I said earlier, a one, a single stream dashboard. We cannot add more than one stream to that. You can see here in the middle that you have the ability to put a whole bunch of charts on there. So it's not like with the default dashboards that were limited to just six of those. I have my stream, I have one, two, three, four, five of those different charts. And then I also have these tiles here on the side. So you can see there's a lot of information that we can put on those dashboards. Now, you probably also notice that on the top, we don't have the hide visual filter or show visual filter, I should say, and switch to stream view. So I cannot make these a stream view, right? Because again, this was a single view or single stream dashboard. Now let's take a look at creating those dashboards. I'm just going to go here, my entities. I'm going to go down to dashboards. And if I click on the new button over here, I can create a new interactive experience dashboard. So as you can see, I have the ability to choose either a multi-stream or a single stream. So let's take a look at those differences. Now the multi-stream, right, we can see here, we can have one, two, three, four of those charts up top or three or two, or again, three over here. So let's just go ahead and pick that four column and then click on create. Now you see a couple of fields over there. Obviously the name field is just what you want to call your dashboard. Then we're going to see the filter entity. And, and this is really the entity that the dashboard is based on. So all of the data in the charts and the global filters in the dashboard will be based on this particular entity. And then you can also see that you have an entity view. So again, right? All of those dashboards, these vi visual filters that you see here, those charts will be based on that view. So let's just go ahead and actually pick cases. You 
here's case and let's just do active cases then we have the filter by and the filter by and the time frame go hand in hand the filter by is a date and time field that you want to filter on let's say we're going to do a modified on and then the time frame is the records that will show up in this dashboard depending on the time frame that you pick now obviously this is just the default time frame users can when they open a dashboard select a different time frame or even a custom time frame now let's take a look again at those charts that are underneath this visual filter section if i click on this you'll notice that i don't have the ability to change my record type or my view right because it's all set for the entire dashboard for all of those visual filters and the data in the global filters right here up top so you can just go ahead and pick a dashboard and pick a chart and you could do the same thing right as you are adding more of those charts to the dashboards right that's how you do that now let's talk about streams i can just go ahead here and click on stream and here for each stream that i add to my multi-stream dashboard i can select different entities and i can select different views i can just go ahead and click ok can add another stream and you can see here that besides adding a view I can also add a queue so I can go ahead and just pick the actual queue name then again I can select a queue view and then the record type the queue record type as well and voila there we go then all you have to do is just save it close it and make sure that you add the dashboard obviously to in this particular case, the Customer Service Hub app. All right, so those were the multi-stream dashboards. Now let's take a look at a single view dashboard. I'm going to click again on Interactive Service Hub. I click on single stream and you can see here all the different items we can choose from. Let's do the five column. So you now see that that filter view is not there because once we actually pick the entity let's again do case here we go we have the same fields to filter by which is that date and time field let's do last quarter or this quarter and now you will see that when i add my one single stream i cannot pick the record type because again that's set here in the filter entity field i can however now pick a view and whatever view I will pick here will be used here in my charts as well. So I'm not going to be able to change that. And you can see I can also select a queue here if I wanted to. So let's do the active cases. And now let's add some charts. So again, you can see the record type cannot be changed. My view cannot be changed because I set that here in my single stream. But I can just go and pick. Here we go my charts from here and just add them directly from here then we also have as you can see tiles over here i can just go ahead and click that so you saw earlier that i actually changed my stream into tiles that's what this is now what i can do is i can pick different entities again let's see I wish that these were alphabetical, but unfortunately they're not. Let's say we're going to do invoice, active invoices. Here we go. And we can add another one. Let's just do article, all articles, right? So this is kind of how you can add that. Now let's pivot back to the dashboard. So besides seeing the hide or show visual filter and the switch to tile view there is one button that both dashboards have in common and that is the show global filter and if i click on that that's now going to allow me to filter anything any data in these dashboards or here that i have in my streams based on what I pick in here. So for example, I can say, 
let's just go ahead and pick by origin. We can see here that we have four, so I'm just gonna go ahead and pick email, and then I am going to apply those global filters. So you can now see that all of those cases that meet that origin of email are now showing here in my visual filter and also the you can see here cases in my queues and my active cases those are now also filtered out based on that origin now you're probably wondering okay well what if i want to add or take fields out of that global filter can i do that absolutely yes you can so let's take a look at that we were just looking at the origin field. So let me go back to make.powerapps.com and find my origin field. Here it is. And if you open a field and you looked at the, you look at the advanced options, you can see here that you can allow it to appear in the global filter in the interactive experience dashboard. Now, another thing I wanted to show you just close this is the colors that you see here on the side so you can see this is a green color red and then we have yellow here as well what I've done is I've actually configured the priority field and the values I added color to each of those individual values in that drop down or option set field. Now you can configure these colors for option set type of fields and also for two option fields. And the way that you do that, let me actually go here, go back to my field that I opened. This is that priority field. And if you click here on those values, you can see that I added a color for each individual value. So high is red, normal is yellow, and then low is green then obviously you still need to put the field on the form and i mentioned earlier that the form that's used for this is a card form so let's go back here yes i want to close the panel let's take a look at our forms and then here is our case card so if you open that up as you can see it says in here color strip. That's where you want to drop in your two value, two option type of field, or obviously your drop down field. So that's why I have priority. Then you can see here in the header, origin, category, subcategory, and owner. You have to keep in mind that the fields that are in the header, that there is not going to be a label for those fields, neither uh, for these that you see here in the details, the case title and in description. The footer, those values or those fields, I should say, will show the labels of those fields as well. So let's take a look at that, right? You can see here we have phone, waste pickup, no pickup, waste pickup queue. So if we go back here, that is the origin is phone and then the category and subcategory and then the owner, which is that queue. Then in the middle, we have the case name and then we have the details in here, the description. And then you can see we have Faith Bemka as the contact, the household as a customer, and then the created on date and time as well. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit that like button and be sure to check back again next week for another video. Thanks so much for watching and stay safe, everybody.